Welcome all. So today we will be discussing about various methods to calculate annual depreciation cost of a power plant. We have already discussed about the depreciation. Let us re remind about the depreciation. So what is depreciation? We know that the value of power plant decreases from its initial value to the salvage value at the end of its useful life. This depreciation is due to the aging, wear and tear of machinery, corrosion, weathering, inadequacy and the obsolescence of the equipment. At the end of the useful life of the plant, fund must be available to replace the equipment. So, so the depreciation charge represents the amount which is set aside from the income every year and a place in depreciation reserve. So this fund is accumulated at the, so that the, at the end of the useful life of the power plant, this fund can be used to per, to erection a new power plant or to replace the existing power plant. There are three methods to calculate the annual depreciation cost of a power plant. The very first one is the straight line method, diminishing value method and the last one is the sinking fund method. So first we will be discussing about this straight line method. So straight line method is very much simple method and in this method there is a provision is made to set aside a fixed amount of money every year. Now this amount remains fixed for every year and it depends upon the useful life of the plant. It can be as a total depreciation value divided by the useful life of the plant. right? So the depreciation is calculated with the help of the salvage value or the salvage value is also as a scrap value. So the annual depreciation cost calculated from the straight line method is given by the subtraction of initial or the capital cost of plant with the scrap value and divided by the useful life of the plant. Now taking an example, if the initial cost of the plant is, is 5 lakh and after the end of it, its useful life, the scrap value is 20,000, then the annual depreciation charges is given by 5 lakh minus 20,000 divided by 40, which, are, which, are, which comes out to be 12,000. So, to replace the existing plant with the new one at the end of the useful life, we have to set aside 12,000 every year up to 40 years. So, the equipment or the plant value after n years is equal to nothing but vk minus of p vk which is equal to p of minus qk right what are the various advantages of the straight line method are it is very much simple method and it is very much easy to apply but there are certain disadvantage also uh, the very first one is the depreciation of equipment is not constant every year at the initial life at the initial time of the initial time of the power plant the depreciation may not be high very much high but at the end of the use, its useful life the depreciation will be more compared to the initial time also it does not consider the amount of interest earned by the annual depreciation amount set aside annually so we are not considering the interest that that will be that we will be given on the amount that we are putting in the depreciation reserve. So here, here is the graph which is showing the, dep the straight line method. The green line shows the reserve, reserve accumulation and the red line shows the depreciation. The, the initial cost of the plant is a P and the plant will start depreciating its value from P towards the S. So S is nothing but the scrap value. The total amount that depreciated is nothing but the P minus of S. S is the scrap value which we will, we will get by selling the old equipment of the plant. The blue dashed line represents the total reserve accumulation over the its useful life. The second method is nothing but the diminishing value method. Right? In this method, a fixed rate of depreciation value is set. Right? Now, this rate is first applied to the capital cost of the power plant and then to, then to the diminishing value. This rate, the calculation of rate depends upon the useful life span of the plant. 
the yearly depreciation value in this method can be calculated by assuming that the P is nothing but the capital cost of the equipment, X is the annual unit depreciation. Right. So, if we take the annual depreciation is 10%, then the annual unit depreciation is nothing but 0 0.1. 10 by 100 is equal to 0 0.1. So, after the one year, the value of equipment will be P minus of Px. So, P is nothing but the capital cost of equipment and Px is the depreciated value. So, the cost of the equipment after the one year will be P minus of Px. And the annual depreciation after first year is equal to P minus of Px multiplied by X. As we already discussed that the rate is first applied to the capital cost P and then to diminishing value. So, it is it is being multiplied with very well first with the P and then to the diminishing value. Right. So, after the second year after the second year, the value of equipment is equal to diminishing value minus of annual depreciation. So, it will be equal to P minus Px minus Px plus of Px square. So, it will be equal to nothing but P minus 1 minus x whole square. So, after the useful life, we can say or generalized expression can be put here and which is equal to P 1 minus x to the power n where n represents the useful life of the power plant. So, here is a graph showing the, the diminishing value method. From the graph we can find that the reserve accumulation is higher at the initial state, stage of the time compared with the later span of the time and the value that depreciated is higher at initial time compared with the later time. This represents the total reserve accumulation and this represents the total depreciation. So, this amount is nothing here but it is equal to P minus of S. So, P minus S represents the total depreciation value. This represents the scrap value and this represents the total reserve accumulation. So, the equipment of the plant value after the n years is nothing but equal to vk which is, which is equal to p 1 minus x to power k. The diminishing value has an advantage that it, it has better distribution of charges. In the early years we have seen from the graph that in the early years depreciation charges are more while maintenance and repair charges are less and in the later years the depreciation charges are less while the maintenance and the repair charges are higher. It has a it has a one disadvantage also that in this measure also the amount of interest is not taken into the account like the straight line method. So, the, the third method to calculate the depreciation charges is nothing but the sinking fund method. Right. So, in this, in this method the arrangement is made such that the fixed amount is set aside annually and then invested at a certain interest rate which is compounded yearly. Right. So, we are getting the advantage of interest on the depreciation charges. Now, th this fixed depreciation charges will be such that the sum of these charges, right? So, depreciation charges and the interest collected on these charges must be equal to the cost of replacement of the equipment. In the old previous two method, we have not taken into the, we have not taken the interest as the depreciation fund value. So, the depreciation fund value will be higher than what calculated. But in the sinking fund method, the depreciation fund value has also included with the interest that has been collected on the depreciation charges. Right? So, let us suppose that the P is the initial value of the plant and is the useful life of this plant, S is the salvage value after n years of useful life, and R is the annual rate of interest. So, after n years, the salvage value will be received and the cost of equipment replacement is equal to P minus of S. Now, let's suppose that the depreciation amount that has been set aside every year is Q, right? And the interest will be received on this amount till n years are completed. So, 
after n years the total amount must be equal to the cost of replacement that is p minus of s now suppose if we deposit amount q for the first year then the interest that that has been made after the one year is equal to r of q and the total amount after one year will be q plus of r q right so similarly after n years the amount will be equal to q 1 plus r to the power n now but remember that amount q is added at the end of first year hence it will be collect collect interest only for the n minus 1 year so the amount q that is deposited at the end of first year will be equal to q 1 plus r to the power n minus of 1 similarly we can say that the the amount that is deposited at the end of second year will be equal to q 1 plus r to the power n minus of 2 and the amount that will be available after the n years will be equal to q 1 plus r to the power n minus 1 plus 1 plus r to the power n minus 2 plus 1 plus r to the power n minus 3 and so on till 1 plus r to the power 1. So it is nothing but a GP. So the total fund that, that can be collected using the sinking fund method is equal to q 1 plus r to the power n minus 1 divided by r. Here is the one important thing is that the total fund that has been collected must be equal to the cost of replacement that is p minus s therefore p minus s is equal to q 1 plus r to the power n minus 1 divided by r or we can say that the q that is the sinking fund is equal to p minus s divided by r divided by 1 plus r to the power n minus of 1 so this is the this is the value of plant after n years bk which is given by p minus q 1 plus r to the power k minus 1 divided by r is a graph which is showing the the amount collection with the help of sinking fund method so this shows the depreciation the red curve shows the depreciation depreciated value and the green curve shows the reserve accumulation this is this is amount which is been collected as a total depreciation p minus of s and this amount is nothing but the scrap value this shows the total reserve accumulation in the n years that is in the useful life plant year thanks